This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to use the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. We might be over a fortnight into the Russian invasion of Ukraine, but the Western response thus far has consisted mainly of sanctions and sending military assistance to Ukraine. While the sanctions used so far have been unprecedented in scale and are damaging the Russian economy, there were some conspicuous exemptions for Russian oil and gas. With Putin apparently undeterred and the war continuing, a couple of Western countries, most notably the US, have imposed sanctions on Russian energy imports, and pressure is building on the rest of the world to take action too. So in this video, we're going to take a look at these hypothetical energy sanctions, whether they're a good idea, and what the potential consequences may be. Before we begin, currently only about a quarter of you are subscribed. So never miss a thing during this difficult time by subscribing and joining the TLDR gang. The impact of energy sanctions would hit the entire world, but let's start by taking a look at how they would affect Russia. The first thing you need to know is that Europe buys a lot of Russian energy. Before the war, Europe was spending about $350 million a day on Russian oil and a further $200 million on Russian gas, meaning that Russia was earning a bit over $500 million per day from energy sales to Europe. Yep, you heard that right. At the start of the year, Europe was spending $500 million a day on Russian gas, accounting for more than half of all Russia's energy sales. And as the wars continued, that number's only risen. And that's for two reasons. Firstly, supply disruptions have pushed energy prices even higher. Brent crude is currently trading at about $100 per barrel, which is 40% higher than it was a year ago. And only a week ago, it reached a peak of $130 a barrel. Gas prices are even crazier. European gas futures are currently trading at about 115 euros per megawatt hour, which is literally five times what it was a year ago. Secondly, despite rising prices, Europe has actually been buying more Russian gas, with traders anxiously stocking up in anticipation of future sanctions. Europe is now buying about 60% more gas from Russia than it was pre-war. And these factors combined, the increased cost and increased volume, means that Europe now spends about twice as much on Russian energy as it did before. On the 3rd of March, for instance, Europe spent $720 million on Russian gas alone. If you then include oil and coal, Europe is probably spending between $700 million and $1 billion per day on Russian energy imports. Yep, you heard me right. Russia receives as much as a $1 billion per day from Europe, twice as much as what they were spending pre-war. And this money is absolutely essential for Putin. Not only does he use it to fund his war, but he also needs it to prop up the ruble. That's because Russian exporters are currently required to use 80% of their foreign exchange reserves to buy rubles, which artificially increases demand and therefore value. These measures have helped the ruble recover by 25%, from 140 ruble per dollar in early March to 180 ruble per dollar today. And it's this foreign money coming from Europe which is crucial to that movement. And that's because if Europe were to sanction Russian energy exports, Russia would lose 50% of its energy sales overnight. Now, you might be thinking, surely Russia can just sell energy to someone else, like China or India. And while some trade adjustment is possible, A, it takes time, and B, there's an upper limit. That's because while Russia might be able to sell its oil elsewhere, Russia sells most of its natural gas to Europe via pipelines. And if these pipelines are sanctioned, the gas can't easily be redirected anywhere else, because, well, you'd need to build entirely new pipelines. And Europe accounts for about 75% of all Russia's gas exports. So that would mean a hell of a lot of new pipes. Russia is trying to diversify its gas exports, most notably by constructing new pipelines to China. 
but these just won't be ready until 2025. And even then, they'll only have a capacity of about 500 billion cubic meters, just 30% of the 167.8 capacity that Russia currently has with Europe. Even when it comes to oil, finding new buyers for the Russian products will take time, which is why sanctions are more effective the quicker they're implemented, because they give the sanctioned country less time to readjust its trade. Anyway, the point is that sanctioning Russian energy would mean Putin immediately losing about a billion dollars a day in revenue, crippling both Russia's economy and the ruble. So clearly, sanctions would really hurt Russia. But what about the other side of this? How would it hurt Europe? Europe clearly relies heavily on Russia for energy products. Russia supplies about 40% of the EU's imported natural gas, 25% of its imported crude oil, and 45% of its imported coal and other solid fuels. These figures also disguise the massive variation within Europe. For example, all of Austria's gas imports come from Russia, while Spain imports no Russian gas at all. This is why some countries in Europe have been more willing than others to sanction Russian gas. For example, the UK has said that it can wean itself off Russian gas within a year, while Germany has so far been reluctant to make any such similar commitment. And it's no coincidence that Russian energy imports constitute 30% of Germany's total energy consumption, but just 8% of the UK's. So how badly would Europe be hurt? Well, no one knows for sure, but it probably would be manageable. There are various ways that Europe could replace this short haul. They could buy LNG on the international markets, temporarily reopen coal and nuclear plants, maybe even ask America to free up some of its strategic petroleum reserves. And European countries that rely heavily on Russian gas will be helped by the EU's single energy market and Europe's impressive web of energy interconnectors. Worst comes to worst, Europe might just have to shut down certain industries to maintain domestic supply, but this would only ever be temporary. Anyway, a team of German academics recently ran the numbers and concluded that if Russian energy was sanctioned, German GDP this year would shrink between 0.2 and 3%. To put that in context, that means that the cost to German households would be between 80 euros and 1,200 euros. Now, we're not saying that that's inconsequential, especially given that the average European household energy bill is already up 55% this year. But it's definitely not catastrophic. It is, however, worth saying that the German finance ministry has quoted a higher figure of 5%. But nonetheless, Germany is one of the European countries which is most reliant on Russian energy, which means that other European countries are likely to fare slightly better. You get the point. Cutting off Russian gas would be tough, but it's probably manageable. On to the third and final part of the video. Should Europe cut off Russian gas? Well, the answer to this question probably depends on what you think the likely alternative is. If you think that Putin is already losing the war or have faith that negotiations will start to prevail, then turning off the gas might seem like unnecessary self-harm. But if you think that sanctioning Russian energy is the only thing that can be done to stop the war anytime soon, then a few percentage points of GDP might look like a small price to pay. Interestingly, this seems to be what most of the public are thinking, with polling finding that 71% of Americans and 80% of Brits support a ban on Russian energy. And a recent ZDF poll found that 55% of Germans supported energy sanctions, with 39% against the proposal. If Europe will cut off Russian energy is still an open question, but with the economic impact of the war in Ukraine likely to ripple around the world regardless, it's hard to predict which way this will swing. If probability and predictions aren't your thing, you should check out Brilliant. Brilliant is an online STEM learning platform that turns complex subjects into fun and interactive experiences. I actually did a computer science degree, and I've loved exploring Brilliant to refresh my skills, as well as learning new ones to help with my current job, like their superb statistics courses. But you don't need any kind of background in STEM. If you just want to spend a bit of time building your skills, then you can do it right away with no long, boring lectures like the ones I had to sit through. Sorry to my former university. Instead, you can learn through interactive games and puzzles, the kind of thing you actually want to do. 
There's something at all levels too, with more advanced courses on things like neural networks and even quantum computing. Just pick a course that you're interested in and get started. They're all designed by award-winning instructors and built upon the principle of active learning. So you're gaining STEM knowledge by actually doing it. Brilliant helps you learn new things and sharpen your skills. So if you want to improve with STEM, then you should sign up to Brilliant at brilliant.org forward slash TLDR EU. And the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks so much for supporting the channel.